We have computed the variance of beta based on the model and its assumptions. And we've gotten a simple, beautiful formula. So when the assumptions are incorrect, then of course the formula is incorrect. And this also affects the t-test and therefore the significance level, the p-value, and it affects the confidence interval. So it affects all inference if this is wrong. Our goal today is to find a, an alternate estimate of the variance of beta that does not rely on the model. So, which is true even when the assumptions are incorrect. Okay. The estimator of beta was derived here. So X prime X inverse X prime Y. And we are computing stand robust standard errors by asking ourselves, what is the variability of beta when we do this procedure over and over again? We don't actually need to know the exact details of how we arrive at the estimate. We're just trying to figure out if we apply this repeatedly, what is the variability? Okay, that's a weird concept, I understand that. The variance covariance was derived using the constant variance and independence. So we had a variance covariance structure that had the assumption sigma squared times i, where i is the identity matrix. And that led to a beautiful simplification of the formula because when you apply the variance of this formula, then you do some matrix algebra, but crucially, this form is so simple that the scalar goes out front and I, because it's the identity matrix, disappears, right? It's like multiplying by one in matrix land. And so up to here, it's completely general. Well, this is not general, um, but then the simplification is due to the specific nature of the assumption. If we don't make that assumption, then, but we still keep independence, then we use this as variance covariance matrix, right? The independence assumption uh, implies that the off diagonals must be zero, right? If it's independent, then it must be uncorrelated. But we're making no assumption on the diagonal. And making no assumption, the most general case means that they're all different. Of course, then we have an issue. If they're all different, how are we going to estimate them? Well, so we have n different observations. And we have n different estimates that we need to get. And since they're all independent, any one observation can only help estimating uh, one, one unknown here. So, oh, I'm first deriving the variance. I'll get back to the estimation in a second. So the variance of beta hat is and we're starting out with the same formula but we are using the formula irrespective of the fact where it comes from, so we're ignoring the model. So having this formula still means we do matrix algebra, and we stop at this point where we have the variance um, of epsilon, the variance covariance matrix. And here we cannot do the beautiful simplification because we now have a general matrix, only assuming independence, but the rest we are not making any assumption. So this is not as beautiful a formula, but in a way we don't care because uh, we never used to calculate this by hand anyways, so we let the computer do the work, and if the computer has a complicated formula, well, then the computer works a little harder, right? So the question remains how to estimate this, and we have, as I said, one observation for one unknown. And the most intuitive way to estimate the variability associated with the ith observation 
is to compute the i's residual and square it. Yeah? We have only one observation to contribute to this estimator. So I could make up a function of this one observation, but it can't really involve other observations because they're independent. And it's, yeah, they're independent and, and, and the sigma two doesn't show up anywhere else or the sigma one doesn't show up anywhere else. So it, it must be a function of that one residual. It's just a question, which function do you use? This is the obvious one. And what do you want to divide it by? Uh, well, this one observation, you divide it by one. That would be the intuitive guess, right? And this is indeed the original estimator suggested by White in 1980. It's called the HC0 estimator. OK. It has several names. It has the Huber-White estimator. Um, because well, White was an inventor, and I think Huber independently invented this. It's called the robust estimator for the obvious reason. It's also called the sandwich estimator. And I should add that, that it's maybe the North American sandwich. Hold on, where's my sandwich here? So the North American sandwich has three parts, bread, butter, uh, not butter, uh, meat, and bread again. So bread, bread, and meat in the middle. This is, I call this the North American sandwich because in Germany, we only have meat and bread, right? So what you might call the open-faced sandwich. So when you explain this to a German, uh, why this is a sandwich estimator is completely unintuitive. So it's the North American sandwich. So sandwich estimator, or it's called the empirical variance estimator. So it's one of those four names. Now we have some fancy words. Homoscedasticity refers to equal variances, homo meaning equal and skedasticity meaning variance, and heteroscedasticity meaning unequal variances. These, this estimator is robust to heteroscedasticity. Okay, so that's good. Robustness is good. Why is it called empirical variance? Because it ignores the model, right? So we still use the model to derive the estimator of beta, but we don't use the model at all to derive the estimator of the variance of beta. So empirical means it ignores the model and simply looks like what is the variability of this estimator um, that we can observe when repeatedly applying this estimator. The model has not changed. It's the same model, still with the sigma squared in here, IID. And we use this model to derive the estimator of beta. It's just the standard error that we now derive empirically. And the standard error uses something else here. But for beta, this is just still the same model. OK. We can use the inference, the t-test. Uh, because the normality is uh, the model still assumes normality and independence. And it's just that during inference, we substitute the robust standard error for the um, OLS standard error. Okay. So now we have two ways of estimating a standard error. And of course, you can tell the software which one to use. By default, of course, it uses the OLS standard error. And in Stata, if you want the robust standard error, you have to specify the op what will, uh, option here, robust. I'm giving you an excerpt of a residual vector here, and I'm interested in the question of what is the, what am I looking for, variance? Um, yeah, what is the estimate of the variance for the third observation? This is the third observation. So you have five choices here. And I'm looking for the estimate of the variance for this uh, for this number for three under robust standard errors. All right, I leave you to answer that. And I'm moving on. And here we have a very similar question: same residuals, same output. And now the question is. What is the estimate of the variance 
for the same observation, the three, when we are not looking at robust estimation, when we're just looking at general estimation, so OLS, so just the, the regular approach. So before before this slide deck, what what would have been the estimate of um, sigma squared here for this? So um, and I still have some answers. Okay, this brings me to the end of this section.